How's it going everyone? So today we are going to go over Bloomberg's 2020 most asked interview question called Design Underground System. This is my third video in the most asked interview question series. So if you like these type of videos, feel free to check out some of my other content. This is actually the first design question on this YouTube channel, so I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this type of content. I release coding tutorials every single week. Feel free to check out my Patreon to get access to my private Discord channel. Okay, so we need to design an underground system. This underground system is going to do three different things for us. First, it'll check someone into a station. Second, it'll check someone out of a station. And then finally, it will get the average time to travel between a start and end station. Starting off with checking in, we are given the following method signature. The ID is a unique identifier to our customer, and we must check the customer into the station name at time T. Each customer can only be checked into a station one place at a time. Second, checking out has the same method signature as checking in. So station name in our checkout function is going to be the final destination for our customer at an end time of T. And then our last function, get average time, has the following method signature. Exactly how it sounds, we need to get the average time to travel between two stations. And this time is computed for all previous travel between any two stations. So with those functions in mind, how do we design this class efficiently? Well, we know we have unique IDs for all of our customers. So an easy way to keep track of customers that are checked in and checked out is just using a map. So we can create a map called arrivals and our key will be the unique ID of the customer and the value will be an object containing the customer ID, the station name and the time. And so anytime we check in a customer, we will add this data into the map. Now we need to think about how we keep track of all previous travel between any two stations. Once again, an easy way to do this is using a map. If we take any two stations, we can append them together using a delimiter and that will be our unique key inside of the map. So if we take two stations, say station A and station B, and we just have a comma to be in between them, that would be the unique key between the travel of those two stations. So our second map, we can call it averages, and it will just have a key as a string, which is the combined station names. And this is going to map to an object containing a total and count. Total is the sum of all the travel that has happened between these two stations. Count is the amount of customers that traveled between these two stations previously. With these two numbers, total and count, we can easily compute the average at any time by simply doing total divided by count. And what's great about this is we can compute any average in constant time now. So let's walk through a full in-depth example. Starting out, we're going to check in a customer with an ID of one at station A at time three. So all we need to do is add this data inside of our arrivals map. Then we're going to check in another customer, customer ID two at station A at time 10. Once again, we just add the data to the arrivals map. Then we're going to check out customer one at station B at time five. So when we check out, we need to do a lookup by our customer ID in our arrival map. We find customer one arrived at station A at time three. So we're gonna remove the customer from our arrival map since we're checking them out now. And now we can compute the difference between our start and end time. The checkout time is five, so we do five minus three, and that equals two. And that is how long it took customer one to travel from station A to station B. Now we just need to update our average travel time between station A to station B. We just do a lookup of the string A comma B in our averages map, but there is nothing there yet. So we can simply append to the map A comma B where the total is two and the count is one. And remember, total is our total travel time between station A to station B, and then count is the number of customers that went that exact path. Next, we're gonna call the function getAverageTime between A and B station. 
Getting the average time is very simple because we already have that data readily available. All we have to do is combine these two stations with our delimiter, so A comma B, and then we're going to look that up in our averages map. We see that our total is two and our count is one, so if we do two divided by one, our average time so far from A to B would be two. Next, we're gonna check out customer two at station B at time 20. Same steps as before, we're gonna look up the customer ID and remove that customer from our arrival map. The difference from our start and end time would be 20 minus 10, which equals a time of 10. The start station was A, so if we do A comma B and look that up in our averages map, we find that we have a total of two and a count of one. Now we just need to add the difference that we have just computed, 10, to our total. So 10 plus two is 12. And then we increase our count, the number of customers that went from A to B to two. And then finally, we're going to add this data back into our map. So we do A comma B as our key. And then our value is our total is equal to 12 and our count is equal to two. And then finally, we're gonna compute one more get average time between A and B. If we look up A comma B and perform the division between our total and count, we would get a value of six. Okay, so we have to implement this class underground system and then we have the following functions we need to implement. Check in, check out, and get average time. So to start things off, we need to create two maps, one for our arrivals and then one to keep track of our averages. But in order to do that, we need to wrap the customer data. So we can come in here and we'll create a class and we could just call this an event. And so inside of here, we're going to have a integer ID. This will be the unique ID of the customer. We're also going to have a string, which will be the station name. And then finally, we're going to have an integer, which will be the time. And then let's create a constructor. Additionally, we're gonna to have to create another structure and this will hold the total and the count because that is gonna be what's stored in our averages map. So let's come down here, we'll say class, we'll say average, and we're gonna have a double, which will be our total. And this will just be initialized to zero. And then we're also gonna have an integer and this will be the count and this will also be initialized to zero. So in this average class, we're gonna have to do two different things. We're gonna have two different methods. The first is we need to update our total and increase our count. And then the second function will just be to compute the average. So we can come down here and we'll say update average. And we're going to pass in the new sum that we are trying to add to this total. So we'll just say int diff and then we're gonna increase our count and then do total plus equals diff. And then we need to have another function to compute the average. So we're gonna say public double get average. And this will just be total divided by count. And so now with both of these two classes, we can fully initialize the two maps that we wanted to. So if we come up here, we're gonna say private map. We're gonna have an integer ID as the key. So we'll say integer, and then we'll have an event as the value. And this will be our arrivals map. And then we're gonna create another map, which will be a string. And this will be mapped to our average. And this can just be called averages. And then inside of our constructor, let's initialize these. So new hash map and averages new hash map. So now we can implement our check-in function. This will be very simple. All we need to do is take the ID, station name, and our time T and put it inside of an event object and add it to our arrivals map. So we can say arrivals.put our ID with a new event, ID, station name, and T. Now our checkout function is going to be the biggest piece of this underground system class. So the first thing we wanna do 
is look up the ID from our arrivals map so we can pull down that customer that was checked in. So we'll say event arrival event and we'll say arrivals dot get by ID and then we need to remove this customer from our arrivals map because they have checked out. So we're going to say arrivals dot remove by the ID. And now we just need to compute the difference between our end time and start time. So we can come down here, we'll say int diff equals t, because remember t, we're in checkout function, and t would be the end time. So t minus arrival event dot time. And now we need to compute the key between the two stations of our start station and end station. And that also brings up another thing we have to create a delimiter. So you could use whatever you want for this as long as it's not a lowercase letter. So you could use a pipe character or a comma. I'm just gonna use a comma for this thing. So I'll say private string final delimiter. And this will just be equal to a single comma. And now we can compute the key. So all we have to do, we'll say string key. We're gonna take our start station, which will be arrival event station name plus our delimiter plus the station name that we are currently looking at because we're in the checkout function. And now all we need to do is compute our average with this key. But there is a chance that this key is not in our averages map yet. So we have to do an extra check for that. So we'll say average average equals averages dot contains key of our key. So if it is inside of our map already, we can say averages.getKey. If it's not in it, then we can just say new average, and it's just an empty object right now. And now we just need to call our update average function in this class. So we'll say average.update average, and we're gonna pass in diff because that's what we've computed, the end time minus the start time. So this will be added to our total. And now all we need to do is add this average object into our map. So we'll say averages.put key average. Finally, we just need to implement our get average time function. And fortunately, this is really easy because we pretty much already did all the work in our checkout function. So all we need to do is compute our key once more. So we'll take our start station plus our delimiter plus our end station. And then we'll say return averages dot get our key. And then we're going to get average. And that is it. That is the get average time function because all we're doing is fetching the average object and then we just call the function that we already created, get average. So let's make sure the solution works. Aww. I need to swap these. This should be final string. Let's submit one more time. So our time complexity for check-in, check-out, and get average time will all be constant. And this is because we're using a map. Inserting, removing, and looking up in a hash map will always be constant. And we're not doing any loops or anything like that in any of these functions. So time complexity is constant for all of the functions. Our space complexity, however, is going to be big O of N plus M where n is the number of arrivals that we have and m is the number of averages that we have. Our arrivals map is going to grow larger as we get more customers that check in but don't check out because in the checkout function, we remove those entries from our arrivals map. As for our averages map, that's gonna increase the more times the customers check out. So that's why we have to include both n plus m in the space complexity. So that was Bloomberg's 2020 most asked interview question. I hope this was helpful for you. Definitely like and subscribe if you like these coding tutorials. I release fully animated tutorials just like this every single week. Also check out my Patreon if you wanna join the private Discord channel. We do have a small community, but it is slowly growing. And with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.